stage on stage everyone a huge round of applause for him ladies and gentlemen can we please have mr greget greget Greg has over 35 years of combined experience in the poultry industry and is currently working with Aviagen. Before joining Aviagen, he worked for one of New Zealand's leading integrators in a variety of managerial roles at breeders, broilers, and turkey production. He joined Aviagen in October 2012, initially as a technical service manager, proudly serving customers across Asia. In 2018, Greg was promoted to the position of regional technical manager. at Aviagen Asia where he is responsible for leading the company's technical team across the region please welcome mr greg hit good morning everybody great to see everyone here namaste um as maybe it was indicated uh, i had a 10 years visiting uh, india in my career and uh, my last visit to come and be in india was in July 2019 it was uh, 3 years ago and of course the pandemic uh, saw that uh, we were all locked down so that brings me here today uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and share some thoughts with you uh, it's also amazing to see such a packed room uh, really uh, amazing to see that and that the indian poultry industry is clearly full steam ahead Uh something else that got a little packed over covid is my fit in the suit so maybe uh, we can say that's a uh, an impact of covid uh before i begin i'd like to just acknowledge uh the organizational committee for this knowledge day uh for the invitation to come and speak to you uh it's a great honor for me to do that and i'm very very happy to be here today um i can see we've got a very very full program some really good presentations I hope that you get to take something away from all the presentations today. Make full use of those topics. Uh while we're on topics, uh my topic for today that I have a great pleasure to talk to you on is genetics, breed performance and modern times. And just to start, I'll give a brief overview of my talk, uh just two topics split in half. I'll start with lifting the curtain a little bit for you. on what happens with R&D and uh at the primary breeder level what uh, uh steps the technology that's deployed to make sure that we get the genetic improvement then the second part of my talk I'll cover more about fundamentals of management for extracting the full genetic potential from royals okay if we start looking at the uh, picture and the evolution of R&D in our industry we can see that around 1960 the selection process was quite simple really only a couple of traits were measured and then we can see a gradual progression to what we have today with over 40 traits evaluated at a primary breeder level uh, we can see that we're selecting not only broiler traits but also breeder performance processing and welfare traits it's becoming more and more important for a keen consumer to know that our chicken is safe and an animal is treated well so over 40 traits of value to him one thing that I'll mention is normally there's an antagonism between reproductive trait and boiler trait with latest technology we can now see breeder performance improving every year year on year at the same time primary breeder can deliver improving royal performance even in butlama and here uh, i lay down today a uh, typical uh, introduction of technology and an r&d timeline uh, if you look at this uh, we start in 1916 and move all the way to current day today and i would encourage you all to look at the timeline and consider when you entered the poultry industry Think about when you came into work in the industry for myself 1986 somewhere about here so quite a lot of technology has been developed since myself personally I've been working in the industry uh we can see that we started with mass selection in the 1960s with uh, simplified identifying traits that we want simple traits selecting those 
And we can see as the timeline progresses, we're moving to traits such as heart and blood function, coxin, cox, coxinator. We have multi-environment where we are taking siblings, brothers and sisters, on peer reverts, and we're placing them into different environments, assessing their performance, and then selecting based on the learning from that. We can see new technology being introduced here with individual feed stations and individual birds fitted with RFID tags. And we measure the feed and the water that the birds are consuming. That helps us make decisions for SCR and welfare traits. We can also see digital X-ray and uh, use of computer tomography, CT scanning, and more recently, the use of genomics. We'll talk a lot more on that, but that genomics really helps <laughs> us to make fast decisions that will help us bring a great million data points for every pedigree animal in our primary breeders operations. So that huge amount of information comes through to a computer system. Uh, here, this looks like a gaming uh, desktop computer. In reality, the primary breeder is using modern supercomputers, in fact a number of these, to crunch the data. So now the computer and some very smart software is looking at all of this information so that we can end up with a yes or no decision for the selection team. So that is people in a chicken house with pedigree birds selecting and making a decision. Is this bird in or not? So no longer is it just, please pick up that bird and see how heavy it is. We're taking into account all of this information and that's enabling that fast genetic progress to continue. <laughs> Here uh, we have a predicted rate of improvement for a product that's commercially available in India. And we can see we have both broiler traits and breeder traits. And if you look, all of these traits are predicted to move positively over from 2022 through to 2026 looking forward we can expect to see this kind of rate of improvement in our boiler stock and in our breeders more eggs more hatchability bringing us more chicks at the same time that we see an improvement in fcr so you might be wondering how can we predict accurately what happens in 2026. If we consider the timeline with the generations, at the pedigree level, we understand what's happening with these birds. And we can see the broiler impact and the rate of change. So within a primary breeding operation, we know today what is going to happen once we multiply through the generations from GGP, GP, PS to broiler, and ultimately, to the consumer in the market. And that time frame takes around four to five years. So what we see in a pedigree breeding operation, four to five years to come into reality to the customer. Here's some data just to show uh, the trends and what we can see uh, with performance over time. Uh, first chart here, we have adjusted FCR, uh, this represents 226 companies globally. So there are literally billions of broilers in this information set. And we can see over this period of time that we've had an improvement, and this is an average improvement, of 1.9 points of FCR year on year. At the same time, we see our average daily gain improving with a rate of almost 17 grams at 40 days, year on year. There are not many products that you can buy in a market that every year you get a better version of what you had last year. And the reason for that is the work that goes in at that pedigree level. This chart comes to us from the National Chicken Council in the US, and uh, they've mapped FCR and average daily gain of broilers since selections and the industry really began in 1925. What we can see 
it's quite a fast rate of improvement through to about 2005 for both FCR and an average daily gain. Uh, after 2005, we see more consistent year-on-year -year improvement. And what we see over time, that continual improvement is helping us bring more affordability to our customers and to the end user, more sustainability and better food security. If we consider looking at 1955 broiler and comparing to today's modern broiler, there is a massive difference we can see here. Uh, recently, in 2020, um, Dr. Zarek and Fairchild at uh, U University of Georgia did a comparison, and this is really graphic. What we see here is an Athens Canadian random bread, which is a pure line that's been maintained from the 1950s. Without any genetic progression, that's what your broiler today would look like. But we know we have a bird that looks more like this. And the actual improvement is quite outstanding. Over five times the growth rate, we can see to achieve a two kilo weight, that 1950s broiler would have to be grown to 157 days of age, compared to 31 today. The feed consumption also, Quite amazing, we're saving three and a half kgs of feed to the same weight. And if you're in the broiler industry, you know that that's a big number. That got me thinking, and I was wondering about how that might compare in the Indian market. So I did a little bit of uh, analysis and I asked around, and I understand this figure may be a little conservative. Uh, this was provided by Jira, who are a uh, global protein um, export import advisory business. Uh, they tell me there are seven craw placed per week, more than the DOC. 70 million birds per week. So higher is worse 
we see a lot of variability here. And there's no real trend. There's a lot of noise and a lot of things going on. That's the result of our environment and all the challenges that we face, heat stress, disease challenges, uh, the management, nutrition, raw materials. So those are our challenges that we have to deal with. If we look at the top performance line, we don't see quite the same amount of variation. Uh, that's because those best producers identify and eliminate those things that cause that variation. So that's the genetic side. This green line here is really indicating the genetic potential. And over time, we can see even in India, these are real results. Very good genetic improvement. So while you might not see it in your operations, we've got a lot of room where we could either be up here or down here. And this, that says to me, opportunity. So now the question comes, how do we extract that full potential from our genetics? Firstly, uh, we want to lead uh, with uh, freedom of disease and uh, maximum livability. That's pretty obvious. Keep the birds alive, lower mortality, we're going to do better. But not only that, and even more important uh, is that aspects of effective temperature how the bird feels. We can't ask the bird, but we can certainly observe and see what's happening. So paying attention to what the bird is telling us will tell us, are we in this thermal neutral zone or do we have a problem? The future is going to be controlled environment. And we need to move the industry in India this way. And there are a number of reasons why I say this. We know that the structure is expensive. It costs money to build it, to run it, the energy that goes in. But if we are seriously in business in the poultry industry, we need to give the bird the environment that it needs to extract that genetic potential. And there is a return on your investment with this. We can see 